NFL draft fast approaching. What are we now? Just over a month away, Brian? Yeah. April 29th or May yeah, 1st 20, or something? Yeah, the 20, what is it, 20, 28, 29th? Sounds it's good. Seven twenty-eight. Yeah, it's something like that. It's a weekend. Last weekend in April, I just kind of show up on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday kind of a thing. Can't wait. And in the meantime, we're going to be doing you know considerable amount of talking about what the Cowboys will do at, at twenty-six and the big Cowboy topics. It's time now for an NFL draft big board report. We go to uh, NFL expert Daniel Jeremiah, NFL.com. This guy's good, DJ, and he just uh, he just posted one. Uh, this is post NFL free agency week one. So a lot of things have been decided already. There's only a few key players that might impact the draft uh, remaining that, that are going to go to other teams. And Daniel Jeremiah going with a position that I love the defensive tackle, Mozzie Smith out of Michigan. I think a name that, that Tolo should get more familiar with a good athlete with, with power guys with, what would the Cowboys be thinking if they go, go ahead and take Mozzie Smith at 26? Would you like it? I like Mozzie, uh, especially if you don't bring back a guy like Hankins. You know, for me, that's you know, people that ask, like, hey, is there somebody in the draft that if the Cowboys don't fill the, the the Hankins role that you could take? Now, he's a guy that you're probably going to have to take in the first round, as Daniel Jeremiah had the Cowboys mocked there. But at Michigan, I thought he was a stud. Now, it was interesting because TCU Steve Avia, uh, I thought he won the battle between the two of them yeah. in the bowl game with TCU and Michigan. I thought that was probably the best that I saw Steve Avila play. I liked him a lot, but I, I like Mozzie. I, I think he's a guy that is great against the run. He's an anchor. He's that true trash can full of dirt type of guy in the middle of, of your line. He keeps your linebackers clean, but also I think he does have a little bit of wiggle. He like he's, he's a one tech, but I think he can give you a little bit of pass rush, which is why I personally, early on, I thought him and Ika were going to be guys that people were debating about. It seems like Ika's falling a little bit, but I, I thought Mozzie was better. I, I'm not, I'm not a against the Mozzie Smith pick. And I know some people are just like, oh, it's a Michigan defensive lineman. What about Taco? Don't scout the helmet. Mozzie Smith is a good player. He's much better than Taco was. Yeah, it's a really nice helmet to scout, by the way, the Michigan <laughs> helmet. I enjoy that. Cool, yeah. This guy could push the pocket from the middle, too. I mean, you know, and, and it's just not just straight ahead power. I, I think Zach's got him right. He's got some move to him. You know, size, athletic ability, a lot of positive things about this player. I, I'm sold. I, I love that. I would be shocked if the Cowboys take a one technique, but with Mike McCarthy coaching the team now, I think it's more likely than it ever was under Jason Garrett. It seems like their philosophies are shifting on a number of things. Yeah, that's, you know, the the, the whole thing, if you were in the under the Rod Marinelli administration, th this wouldn't even be a discussion. Yeah, he's he not spending money he on that. He ain't, he ain't taking a but one. Man, if, if Dan Quinn likes a guy, it seems like he's got an ear in that room. Yeah. And if he decides like, hey, all right, Maji Smith's there. Let's go ahead and snag this dude. I need some help in the interior of the line. Let's, let's go we get have him. reason to believe Dan Quinn does like him. Now, this, this, yeah. I, he, he's not one of the guys that I saw him go and work out personally. No. So was, I can't confirm that. Yeah. This, this kid also, though, he had a gun charge against him in October. He did. That needs to be clean, cleaned up, or you need to figure out what that situation is. And that followed him to the college football playoff. Yeah. He was asked a, 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 about that quite a bit, but yeah. I thought he handled himself very well in those interviews. Okay. Names on the board behind Mozzie Smith in Daniel Jeremiah's mock. Would you rather have Quentin Johnston, TCU? Uh, tackle Darnell Wright from Tennessee Ooh. or the Notre Dame tight end Michael Mayer still on the board. Okay, for me, Johnson, Mayer, and then Wright. Wright. Wright's the best player of the bunch for me. Okay. I think Darnell Wright is a guy. Now, Tennessee this, offensive tackle. Tennessee offensive tackle. That'd be awesome. And you watch him against some of the top pass rushers in this draft. Will class. Anderson. Will Anderson. Alabama. BJ Ojolari, LSU. Yeah, right. And he. I thought he handled his own. He was one of the few tackles that I saw be able to really stonewall both those guys. Yeah. I think Darnell Wright is is a stud. I would love to have him. Now, what do you do with your he, offensive line? I don't know. Can he's he play true, guard? He's a true tackle. I think he, he is really too. Is, yeah. Well, it seems like uh, there's a lot of exciting possibilities there at 26. There are. Yeah. Like the Cowboys are going to end up uh, having, having to pick of uh, a number of talented players. Who knows? Maybe they'll surprise us again. With the guy that everybody else thinks should be a third rounder, it'll actually be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we go to uh, Mel Kuyper, unless you have something else to add to that, Brian. Nope. We, go to, we go to Mel Kuyper here. It's the NFL Draft Big Board Report. He has the first player being C.J. Stroud, then Bryce Young, uh, then Indy moving up for a quarterback, and it's getting all crazy there, taking Will Levis at three, and, mm. and then he's got Will Anderson uh, Jr. at four. But you come down here to 26, you want to know who Mel Kuyper, draft expert, has the Cowboys taken? 
Well, it's the defensive end from uh, Northwestern, Mr. Adebowari. Yeah, this say uh, it. Can you say it? Adebowari. Is that is that right? Adetomia Adebowari. Adebowari. And I hope I'm saying that right. I've been trying to practice yeah. this. So good, I watched, Gavin. It was good. Thank watched you. him against Nebraska, and then I went back and, and saw him against Duke in 2021. This is a reach pick for me at 26. This is overhype because the dude crushed it at the combine. This is one of those things where the workout warrior doesn't necessarily match the tape that you see. I see upside. I see potential. But I don't see a first-round player. Might be a better tackle than he is an end. I thought he was better. His, his most impressive pass rushes came when he had to stunt inside yeah. or they just lined him up completely as a defensive tackle. Mel but mentions I think that. His size might be why people don't want to just play him outright at defensive tackle at six foot two. But I, I think that might be his best position moving forward. This this might be our era's Mike Mamula. And when I say Mike Mamula, go back. If you don't know who Mike Mamula was, he was a defensive end from Boston College that blew the combine up and was taken seventh overall by the Philadelphia Eagles and, and wasn't that good of a player. Hmm. And so this, this might be... I think this kid is more maybe a slate two or a three mm-hmm. yeah. when it comes to. I see that. And I think it would be a reach to take him at 26. That Mike Mamula is the classic cautionary tale, isn't that, it? That is. If you don't yeah. know who Mike Mamula is from Boston College, Google him and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, Mel Kuyper with uh, with the 26th pick, taking the DN from Northwestern, still on the board, B. John Robinson, who goes the next pick mm. to the Bills. Darnell Washington, a tight end from Georgia that we talked a lot about. Six seven two seventy. Uh Brian Brees, the defensive tackle, Clemson. Uh Cansey, the defensive tackle, Pittsburgh going to the Eagles. Yeah. So that's who's on the board uh in Mel Kuyper's uh market. I'd rather probably taking all those guys. Really? Every yeah. one of them. Wow. Okay. Every one of them. Th- that's uh quite a bit of disagreement with Mel Kuyper, who's not necessarily at the top of his game. You know, he he's more of a, a celebrity. You know, Jerry Jones would love him if he yeah. was running a TV network. He'd be like, Mel Kuyper's my first analyst because everybody recognizes him. But the hardcore uh, mock people are like, oh, Mel Kuyper, what the hell does he know? I'll say this, though, Gavin. Yeah. To his defense, he had Tyler Smith before anybody else. Yeah, yeah. He's, he knows people. I, and yeah. I don't know. Maybe he might know this Northwestern guy. Maybe so, he does. I'm maybe the saying, Cowboys are like, you a, idiots, we love this there's guy. There's a side of me that I absolutely agree with I you. I told you Jerry loved him. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah. oh, my God, he had the, he had the pick right. You know, so, yeah, he had it before a lot of other people. Mm. Okay, we go to CBS Sports is Josh Edwards. And uh, he's got Luke Musgrave uh, tied in Oregon State. Good opportunity to rank the tight ends here for you guys. Why is Kincaid getting so much more love than Musgrave of uh, of, of Oregon State or uh, the Notre Dame guy? Injury, probably. Yeah, I think Musgrave, the issue with him is is the injury. And I, I guess that that checked out at the combine. I right. think everything was okay with him. The production's just there with Dalton Kincaid. I mean, I just think he had to be the go-to target, and he excelled. And to me, the tape's just overall better when I watch Dalton Kincaid. I've got him as my best guy. Mayer is like the baby Gronk. He's more of a physical big. You can move him around, play him outside at receiver. can also slot, play in the slot. Uh, but I think Kincaid's just the best all around. Musgrave's interesting. He's 6'6". He's huge. Big wingspan, runs really well, kind of a slender frame, but I don't think he's as good of a blocker as the other two when you're talking about complete players. Mm. Yeah, this guy is like like Zach was talking about. I mean, he is one of those guys that can separate and route. You watch him run routes, and it's like you see separation. There's a lot of times these tight ends are kind of lumbery, the way they run. Like the way Darnell they Washington? Yeah, the yeah. way they move. This kid's not that guy. That's what you want in a, in a tight end. They they are dynamic athletes in this game, and if you if you don't have that, I think as a prerequisite for the job, then I don't know what the hell you're doing. Do you really see tight end as that big of a need with Ferguson and Hendershot? I don't see it as a as a massive need where it's like, oh man, you've got to make sure you address this. I think both those guys together can combine to give you the Dolton Sh- Schultz replacement there. Ooh, but uh, really? we almost had apropos. A, maybe, yeah. maybe had a, a little bit of a slip, but. Uh, I do think these guys are special. Like, this is just a special class of tight ends. You don't have to take one in the first round because I think there's guys you could find value with later on in the draft. But Dak also does just like throwing to the tight end. And I think that that's another way that you can help Dak Prescott. Got it right. I don't know why you need somebody else, to be honest with you. I think with Ferguson and Hendershot, they are athletic enough. 
um, you know, you, you see them going up to make plays and, and turning with a look in their eyes and a body posture that says, I'm the hunter here. You're the hunted defensive back. I think these guys are, are, are coming for a big breakout year. And if you add to that room, we'll check to your point and you make it even more sick then maybe, you know, they could have an embarrassment of riches with, you know, three great, great wide receivers making plays and, and three quality tight ends. And, and that could be a lot of fun. Uh, Katie Drummond posted a mock. He's going with the edge from Georgia. Nolan Smith says he's just too good to pass up. Is is he going to be there at 26? That's what we were talking about. We were in, in the Krusty's Corner. We were talking about would if you felt like that he got to 24, would you make a small move to try and go get him? I think I would I would I would be on that uh, I'd be on that train. Same. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like defensive end is is one of those spots that you're fixed at right now and you're feeling good, especially with Fowler coming back. We just got that news an hour ago, but Tank's going to be 31 at the end of his contract and stuff and you got to have a plan. You know, hopefully they can do another contract with Tank and he can be that veteran pass rusher, 33, 34 years old aging well for you, but you can't count on that and if there's a really good talent sitting there at 26, you stack him up like club sandwiches, Brian. You, you taught got, me that. You're right. That's absolutely the way you would go. So if, if he, in fact, would get to you at 26, you know, I, as much as I love B. John Robinson, I would surely consider him. I think that would be really difficult for me to, to kind of choose between the two. I love Robinson, but man, Smith, I think could be dynamic for you.